This are the bait on 2009 Watchmen by Snyder. So, you watched the movie last night? What were your initial impressions? Um, yes, I watched it last night and I thought it was very good. 2009 Watchmen, what, what do you think? 7 out of 10. 7? Yeah. yeah what, why, why 7? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what did you rate it? Um, I, I, think I'd all, I think I'd go with like 7.5 out of 10. Okay, just it's, turn one off me. Movie. Right off the bat, you know what I'm trying to engage with. It's pretty solid movie, time. especially for the genre, you know? Yeah, definitely. I do think it kind of gets outshadowed by The Boy, which is a bit more popular for me, because um, it's new and I watched that first, you know? It's also kind of interesting that um, when Watchmen was originally being released, is that it was it was like a very big release at the time. There was a lot of promotion, a lot of marketing, um, which makes sense because it was such a big book. But nowadays, very few people talk about it, not even on like, DC social media. Yeah, though the comic book is actually still very popular. But yeah, it's still yeah. reprinted every single year. To keep the trademark yeah. from Alan Moore, you know it? Uh, no, I actually didn't know that happened. With he gets it if they don't print it every year, so that's mm. the only reason. Oh. Even if one person is buying it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's cool. Okay, uh, so I think one of the most apparent things when you watch it is the lack of star power. That, like, nowadays you see in movies, you know, Black Adam playing Dwayne yeah. Johnson. You know, they don't even really make sense. But mm. Watchmen, you know, most famous actor... Is who Jack Jackie Earl Haley, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, maybe. Yeah, and you can definitely see this is kind of an earlier version of Zack Snyder's like style. You know that way. Yeah, he was. It was a big budget at the time, but compared to today's movies, nowhere near. Yeah, but I actually think he did a much better job. You know that way with the budget he had. Uh yeah, he definitely started yeah. off pl- um playing very close to source material. Yeah. Um, I would say this movie is almost a shot-for-shot shot remake of Watchmen to some extent. Yeah, definitely. The only difference is obviously the ending. You know? uh, and yeah, there's a few more than that. Yeah, but, but like, the, the most major obvious difference, yeah. difference I, I should say. Okay, so just to stay on the cast, um, Rorschach, played by Jackie O'Hilly, what do you think? The voice, um, maybe? Was there? I will say it was quite weird because when I remembered Watchmen, I don't really remember Rorschach talking too much. Because yeah, he know? writes in his journal all the time. Yeah. And I was just watching him again talking, and I was like, what the fuck? And also, I forget, they take off his mask, you know, that way. He's so iconic yeah. with the mask on. I don't, I forget, he's just a fucking ginger, like, average looking fella. Yeah. So, my real question is, how the fuck does all the ink move continuously? Uh, it's the material it's made from, you know, alternate reality and stuff. It's, um, the, the, it's made by Dr. Manhattan in, oh, in okay. another piece of material. It's really cool to see CGI, though. Yeah, I know, yeah. Um, if you look at it, it was just a white mask, originally. Yeah. But uh, as well, it was pretty cool to see a short guy playing a short character. Uh, so take that, Wolverine. <laughs> what? Wait, when in Wolverine did a short guy play a tall character? Play right now, it's Hugh Jackman. He's like 6'1". So yeah, yeah, no. Wolverine's supposed to be short? Yeah. Well, Rorschach's <laughs> supposed to be short as well, and he's as short as anyone else in The Watchmen. Yeah, I... I didn't really notice Rorschach's height. I don't know. I will say, um, the Night Owl with Patrick Olsen, I don't want to be mean, but that looked fucking ridiculous. That's kind like, of the point though, isn't it? I know, yeah. I know it's the point that he looks so out of place, but being honest, it just looked bad. You know that way at certain points? Yeah, the smile and stuff. And yeah. Look, I, I know Night Owl's supposed to be a weak character, but I, I don't know when he's wearing the suit and stuff. Yeah. That's actually something else I was a bit confused about. Does anyone have superpowers, or are they all just regular people who are just fucking buffing and... No, no, it's just Manhattan, yeah. Yeah, because I never understood that, because one guy, I remember it was... I can't really remember seeing it, it was the Ali fight scene, where he just tried to punch his um, arm out. So the comedian is obviously supposed to be kind of a controversial character, where initially he's going to become very dislikable, and he's going to be kind of humanised for the story. Yeah. How'd that play for you? I, I never see, saw him humanised, you know, that way. Like, I think he did just too many bad things that at some point you just have to be like, nah, no matter what you do, you're an irredeemable asshole. You know that way? Yeah, I, I, it's kind of the, the the idea they were trying to go for, I suppose, is that it was the level of mission he was taking on, the situations he was in that mm. dehumanised the situation to him and kind of made him lose his morality. Yeah, definitely. But I will say he made a very interesting point with Dr. Manhattan. And it was like... Uh, Vietnam. Yeah, you know that way? And it was the first time I actually, he genuinely made me go like, oh shit. Because he actually had a genuine point. He did something completely awful. But Dr. Manhattan just let it. Yes, I looked at his dick. Okay, but the CGI eyes, what do you think of them? 
The then. CGI eyes. Yeah, they're like shiny. Didn't notice them. Oh yeah, yeah, they were shiny. Um, I don't know. Obviously, they were kind of meant to look unhuman. But I think the biggest thing with Doctor Manhattan was I didn't like that he could see the past and future. I remember thinking that during the movie. Yeah, um, is I think it worked a lot better in the comic than the movie because in the in the comic you can do it simultaneously. Yeah. Whereas in the movie, it plays off a lot more like he's just thinking, and he, he's not supposed to be thinking. That's something that did yeah. bother me. You know, and it was just if you weren't gonna do him looking in the future, if you were gonna just negate that like five seconds later, why even bring it up? You know that way. Why make that part of his character? I suppose with context. Yeah. I do think um, what, uh, Manhattan's other abilities though are better represented in the movie than comic uh, his Definitely. manipulation of matter I think it's a lot more clear yeah it really um, you could really feel his power you know that way yeah especially the energy and stuff around yeah him. and especially with all of the all the guys just being humans you know it, it kind of it put them on completely different levels you know it's so like he said at the end they were as big of a threat to him as termites were you know? Yeah. But ultimately, his plan was foiled. Um, um, so do you want to talk about the change from the comic to the TV uh, show? Well, I was going to talk first, but what did you think of um, Man- like Manhattan's secret identity? Not Ma- secret identity, perhaps, but previous identity. Yeah. I thought it was a bit wasteful. You know, the way he had a love interest beforehand. And then he, he like, ditched her and she got cancer and all that. I was thinking... It was already like a three hour movie, you know that way? Yeah. Why did we need that specifically? You um, know? This is just something I found in the movie. It felt kind of episodic to me almost. Like, could have been a TV show. Definitely. You could very see. It was, especially with the flashbacks, it was kind of like, oh, this happened, so they reminisced on this, okay? That brought you to this person who reminisced on that, you know? Yeah, I think it works a lot better in a comic book that's published over months at a time, but. In the TV, like, there's a reason why this movie was... They've been trying to adapt it since the 80s up to 09. Yeah. And um, Snyder took on the task, and I think there were his shortcomings as a result. Yeah. What I thought was extremely out of place was actually the comic book inside the movie. I'm not And the ultimate version. Was it? Uh, It was not the theatrical one. Oh, shit. Well, I had the direct... Uh, My movie was, like, three, three and a half hours long, you know? Yeah, it's definitely misplaced in the... What is I think it's the ultimate version that's part of. Yeah, you know, it, it, I just ended up skipping it. You know that way. Yeah, in, in the original comics, it was in there, and I I, I also skipped it when I read them originally. Um, mm. the prose work it was interesting to see were adapted fully. Uh, at the end of each issue, there would be, like, an article, and it would say like you know Dan Dryberg passed, and it would be um it would, like one of them was about him inheriting the money from his father, and uh, it was interesting. That Snyder just took all those as fact. Yeah. And that happened, whereas I don't think it was as clear in the original. Okay, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, such as, the, the main one to me anyway, was the, the theory that Hooded Justice was a, a German, where that's just straight in there. Is Hooded Justice the... The uh, Minutemen member. Pardon? The Minutemen member. Yeah, but did he have a The purple Black Mask. Book? Oh, shit. Or was it purple? I think he had a uh, purple cape in the Black Minutemen yeah. watching that sequence. Um, <sighs> the flashback at the beginning with the music. Oh, I really did like that sequence. I just remember noticing, because someone mentioned it beforehand, but it was the first one where it was like, the night owl punched a guy in the alleyway, and that was clearly a reference to Batman. Yeah, that was was really cool. Um, As Watchmen itself was a parody of other comic books at the time, I did feel the movie, now it was probably a bit early for this, but a lot better nowadays, but it did kind of parody the superhero movies at the time, especially with like, Mm. Ozymandias' suit. Yeah, definitely. But I will say, the parody has gone a bit old because I think the genre has changed so much, you know, that way. For sure, and that's why you say The Boys is a lot more relevant today. Yeah, since. definitely, you know. And it's just like, um, especially with the main um, comparison would always be Ozymandias to Homelander, you know. And it's kind of like Ozymandias... Took his image as a superhero, became a corporate being, and all yeah. that. While Homelander Home kind of the opposite. Yeah, he was kind of just taken in by a corporation, and was made to be a superhero. 
it was quite an interesting contrast. And as well, the, the rapid mood shifts, the visual likeness themselves. Mm, definitely. The kind of idea of being the ubermensch, you know, the superman. Yeah, because I actually thought at the start, like, just before the final fight, that Ozymandias actually did have superpowers. I knew he was the smartest guy I know. He did catch a bullet. I know, yeah, but you know that way? And it was just something Warshak said where he even alluded to it. So when I saw the gun being pulled out, I was like, oh yeah, he caught that, you know? I didn't think he was dead, but... Yeah, it was interesting to me how, um, I'm not sure what the word would be, uh, memorable I thought the Minutemen scene was. Because it didn't really use video like the rest of the movie. It was almost like a comic book with just pictures. I know, yeah, I definitely would agree. It wa- it's probably the most memorable scene, in my opinion. I would say as well, it's that really good context compared to the rest of the movie, where I think if you don't, if you haven't gone for the original, I think the movie would be kind of confusing by itself. But mm. that scene, I think, very clear in its meaning. Yeah, definitely. And I especially liked it set up so much. It set up the two generations without having to explicitly state that. They kind of did backtrack with the night the scene where we first get introduced to With Hal Mason speaking to the second night oh yeah. Yeah, you know that way and it kind of was a bit like mm, but yeah. And this brings me to uh, I wrote it down here and I know you don't know what it means yet, Snyderisms. Yeah. It's a term that I've originated, um, it's a term you'll probably never hear again. <laughs> what I'm referring to this is two tropes of Snyder's work that I think started with Watchmen. Um, they're very clear in his other work as well, I think. Um, what I'm referencing is his very, very apparent use of slow motion. Definitely, yeah. I, I would could... say you can see that from the first scene the movie with the you. fight. 100%. I, there are a good three or four or five moments, you know, that way. Just in that scene alone, yeah. Yeah. And it was actually, I remember I was watching the scene, and I thought the first bit of action was very good. But when he started pulling out a knife and they started doing so many quick cuts, I thought it kind of fell off a bit, you know, because yeah. it just made me disorientated, you know, that way. Well, I know we had this debate a bit earlier, but it was like long takes versus quick cuts. And I do think there should be a middle ground. All right. So when I say Snyderisms, I think there's a second part to that. And to be honest, I don't think this bit's I I don't think the slow motion is really a negative either. I just think it's a stylistic yeah. um choice. But I do think the second part is a bit more hit or miss at people, is that he sets up a lot of shots that are quite clearly meant to be key shots or posters. Um the example of Watchmen I would think of would be like um they're often him trying to recreate panels, such as when he's got when he's got Rorschach yeah. standing on the sort of tower when he's breaking into a Rockefeller research base. Yeah. Um, even the comedian coming out the window already in the movie. Definitely. You could definitely see it was kind of... I don't know how to say it, but there was major bits in the action and then there was a lot of shuffling to get to the next big like, action thing, yeah. you know? But what I'm on about though is when it's like it's kind of like the slow motion where it just pauses on certain characters standing certain ways. Yeah. Because like even the first time watching it I fully... I fully actually guessed that um, the homeless guy was um, Rorschach before yeah. it was revealed, you know, that way. For Rorschach, I just want to... Um, he meets Moloch twice in the original, and in the movie he only meets him once. Uh, the ending with the squid is changed to Manhattan. Yeah. These are kind of small changes by themselves. What I'm, I'm not going to ask you about each change individually, I'm going to ask you what you think of the changes. Yeah, so who's Moloch again? Moloch is the villain from... The Watchmen days. Oh yes, 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 definitely. Um, what I actually think of the changes overall is, um, initially this was like a when I first watched it, I thought the changes were good. You know the way like I did like the ending, but when you think about it some more, and I can't remember who said it, but someone said it. If you think about it too much, with the Doctor Manhattan thing, realistically the world wouldn't band together to fight him. They would surrender to him. You know that way? Like the Vietnamese. Yeah. When any major event occurs, that's typically like a civil war. Like, especially governments overthrown and... Yeah, it's kind of interesting though, because there isn't a divide in the America of Watchmen. Really? And Nixon, it's, you got the vote in five times. Communists seem to be the only second option and they're not popular. Yeah, and... What do you think of that one-party system? I suppose what I'm asking here isn't more, more so your opinion on the political system, but more so your opinion on the alternate reality of it. Yeah, see, I actually didn't 
fully think of it as an alternate reality until Nixon got thing in three times. I thought they would just put superheroes into our reality. But you, it's like the butterfly effect, you know that way? Yeah. So you could see how it became like that, definitely. Because the superheroes in this version, well, superheroes, mass Avengers, I suppose would be the correct term for the movie. Yeah. They began in the 40s in this world. Yeah, definitely. And I love the way they only were started because the v- villains, you know, that way the super criminals, I'm using air quotes, so you can't see this in the yeah, actual yeah, things, um, how they, they did it to, like, skirt the law. So then the superheroes came to basically avoid the law and just beat the shit out of them. Yeah, I prefer it being told by a character than like, the way it was told in the original. In the original, it was Power of the Prose, and I don't think many people wanted to read the four blocks of text to get there. Yeah. Uh, as well, changes. I do think this one's a bit more interesting, just as a change to speak about by itself. Um, the meeting originally, where the Watchmen are formed, is actually Captain Metropolis who heads the meeting. Not Ozymandias, that was changed. Yes. Um, and it's just the Watchmen members in the movie. But in the original, it was an older um, Captain Metropolis, and he was kind of begging them on people could perceive those and trying to save the world. It's probably just him trying to Reca- keep his coolness. Yeah, recapture the glory days. I think Ozymandias heading the meeting is actually a lot better for his turn. I think it makes more sense why he would then realise why superheroism won't work. Yeah, because I will say, for all his setup and all that, it did somewhat come out of left field, you know, that way. I don't know, but that, what I'm saying is, in the movie, I think it works better because that's the moment where I do think before that, a smart person could see the idea of superheroism and kind of not think it through all the way and go, yeah, we can do this and it'll work. Mm-hmm. When it's that moment where he's got a real government man saying to him, like, you're, what you're doing here is it completely ineffective, I do think that's what makes him reconsider. Def- I think it's a lot more, makes a lot more sense for his meeting to fail than Captain Metropolis's. The thing is, you mentioned earlier Night Owl not being cool, and I mentioned earlier characters being more cool. Where I'm going with this is, there's a weird shift between coolness and not coolness, where it's it's almost as if Snyder wasn't sure whether or not he wanted to keep the original's uncoolness, or whether he wanted to make his own cooler version, he did both. Definitely, yeah, because I just remember, it was the first time Rorschach was on screen. I kind of just thought he was a bit fucking silly, he was a shitty Batman, you know that way? And yeah. I think that's the impression you were supposed to get. But over time, you kind of... You the see, physical feats and the yeah, stealth and stuff. You kind of start going back to it and being like, yeah, he's actually pretty cool. And Night... Him, the Night Owl, or... Yeah, Night Owl. It was just kind of... I th- don't think he ever became cool, you know? Yeah, and, there was that one shot of him uh, the day before the Keen actually was passed. I thought that one looked pretty cool when it's him and the comedian and the Elsha. Yeah. You know, that shot where he comes down. Yeah, but oh, but the thing was the owl shit. It looked so fucking stupid. <laughs> no, that is the one thing. No shot it was in. I could genuinely go like, oh, that that's a good shot. I, I don't know. want the burning building looks okay. No, not even that. I think the only time it looked cool was like, I don't know how to, you know, the smoke kind of obscuring it. <laughs> so it looked like, cool when it wasn't there. Yeah, you know the way I was trying to think through, but I genuinely he. I thought that was the worst part about the entire I, I, thing. No, you could argue it's just my nostalgia for the original, but I did think the first time we see it coming out of the tunnel, I did think that was very cool. Yeah. As well, the moments in the movie, I, I felt like it was a, a pivotal moment, really, seeing mm. the two of them go back to the roots of what made them tick. Yeah, but that didn't really last for that long. I think, I think since the story was so massive, you know, no way, and it went over so many volumes, while every volume was obviously important, there were stuff you would be, have been able to leave on the cutting room floor, you know? I will say, I did like Rorschach's backstory. It was very dark and cruel, cruel, but I think that's actually what made him cool. I think that's kind of one of the moments that's made me kind of... The prison segment in general, you know, that way... Yeah. ...was kind of when he became cool, in my opinion. Not that long into the movie? I don't know, but, like, it's the first time it fully cemented, you know, that way. I thought he was a lot cooler just seeing him climb up the building. You should see him in the original. He's, like, hanging off at all awkward and stuff, because uh, Moore wrote in the notes on his original script, like, make this look as uncool as you can, and then Snyder just went, <laughs> no, we won't do that. Yeah. I did really like um, Dr. Manhattan and uh, Night Owl's thing, where he was kind of like, okay, can you give me the answers? And he was just like, no, goodbye, you know? 
I'm not done talking to you. Bye. <laughs> you know? So now I about his superhero movies. Uh, an interesting thing to me was, if you look at the tools that were used, um, Rorschach's grapple hook being the main one to me, um, it, it appears he almost reused them in Justice League, if that makes sense to you. Yeah, you can definitely see, because it was the grapple hook that really drew my Batman and Rorschach um, similarities, because going into it, at least, I thought it would have been Night Owl who would have been the main like Batman, and I just... I don't think it was... It was in the original, actually, yeah. There was a, a line about it where um, it said no one knew why the comedian was in Dallas. Having the comedian just confirm to shoot Kennedy. I oh, thought that was a bold choice, and uh, it was a very cool visual. Yeah, definitely. And it does put more um, conspiracy, because it makes you instantly think that... Um, Rick... Wait. Okay, I might have my tongue was fucked up. Did Rick... Rick should... Um, Nixon. Yeah, Nixon become president after Kennedy died, or... Yeah. Yeah. So it makes you think he had him killed, you know? Well, that's, that's what was wrote initially, that the, the Nixon administration had a great relationship with comedian. But as well, I think it's the comedian a lot more weight, because in the first one, it's, a, it's more so suggested, whereas in this one, it's like, Rorschach says very plainly, like, the idea of anyone killing the comedian in a fist fight is ridiculous without them also being a, a superhero or something similar to that. What do you think of the actors being the same ages of the movie? Um, it was an interesting thing, I think, um, it may have come down to budget. I know we were, went with a bunch of not well-known names in cinema, so I'm not sure if it was just he really wanted certain performances from people, and maybe wanted the consistency in performance. But um, it was definitely an interesting decision. Uh, like, with the first Silk Spectre, playing, having the actress at her actual age, and then so old later on, and as well having her in what seemed to appear to be about her 40s, um, I, I do think it made the movie look strange at times. Uh, I think it works a lot more effectively with the comedian. Uh, probably helps the, the actor himself. Um, Morgan's a bit older anyway. But like when he plays a younger comedian, I think that one's a bit... But the comedian in Vietnam, Dallas, and older comedian in the beginning, I think all those work quite effectively. Yeah. Interesting ideas. Yeah. Or we could do verses, you know? Comment down below, you know? And now our... This is all going in now. Yeah, and now our sponsorship from Ray Channel. Let Manscaped is available. Yeah. Use my link. We were actually just eating O'Reilly's. Big shout to O'Reilly's now. Um, give us some money. Game of Thrones season 8. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we, only, we all know there's only four seasons of Game of Thrones. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> That's all for now. See you next time, folks. Ba-de-de-de-de.